hey, this is Digital Bike Computing. We are running macOS Sierra, and let's go through the steps on how to speed up your Mac. So these are just some simple steps that you can take to make your Mac run faster on macOS Sierra. So let's go into them now. Removing files you no longer need. Now this is also true of adding files to your computer that you won't actually need. You'll find that over time, you know, Mac OS Sierra is such a great operating system. You're gonna to wanna to dump a whole heap of stuff. You're gonna to wanna to put every single photo, all of your PDFs, your Word documents. You wanna save every website that you're visiting, all that sort of stuff. That is all great. But the more files you've got on your Mac, the slower your Mac will run. So keeping the limited, uh, keeping your files limited on your Mac will generally make it run better. Going through your Mac and clearing out files that you don't actually need will help it run faster as well. So just doing a routine, going into your Finder, you know, for example, and we're going into Documents. Going into here, if you have them in your documents, if you have them on your desktop, go into your desktop and remove files that you're no longer needing. The more files you remove, the quicker your Mac will run. You'll find that I've got 127.2 gig free. The more capacity you have freed on your Mac, the quicker it's gonna run. Some Macs, you'll find that they just get very small. You know, if you have like 10, if you have five, even 20 gig of, of um, space left, things can start to get sluggish. So the more files you can remove, the better as well. Along with files are applications. Removing applications that you don't need is also gonna be a dramatic improvement. Um, you will probably go to the internet and download a whole bunch of files. Excellent. We wanna download apps, we wanna download a whole heap of cool stuff to make our Mac experience so much better. But um, I'm sure you go through your applications, like I do, and you go through this applications list in your finder and you'll find stuff in here that you don't actually need. So going through here and clearing out applications, removing applications that you don't need will assist, right? You don't want the application, don't keep it. Don't keep the application just because it's there, just because you, it's, you've, you've downloaded it and you may not want to use it. Select the application and trash it, all right? Just grab the application and drag it into your recycling bin, click on the little trash logo, Right click and click on move to trash. Any of those options will do, but remove applications to help clean, uh, keep your Mac running in its optimal position. Clearing up your login items. So your Mac will probably have some applications that are running in the background without you even knowing. These are apps that start up when your computer starts up. So by removing some of the applications that you don't need to be starting up every single time you boot up your Mac, not only will it speed up the boot time of your Mac, but also will speed up your Mac in general because it's not running in the background. So we wanna go into system preferences and from within here, we go into users and groups. You'll find your admin account Yours will probably be locked. You just unlock it and it'll ask you for your password and put that in. And then you select login items. So you'll see that there are three applications that are running in the background every single time my Mac starts. You may have a few more. You may, you may probably have a few more than this. It's because I've already gone ahead and cleaned up some in here. But all you have to do is select the ones that you don't want. So for example, I don't want iTunes to start every single time I boot up my Mac. So I can select iTunes and I can say, my, click on the minus key and that'll remove it. And now iTunes will not start when my Mac starts. Okay, nice and easy. So you'll speed that up. Now the good thing about this is you can actually add applications on here as well if you do want certain apps to start as well. But look, that's not the purpose of this demonstration. We want to actually speed up your Mac. So the less apps you have on here, the better it is. An important thing that you can also do is to clear out your cache, or some people like to call it cache. I think it's cache. Cache is applications that are open, right? If you open up an app on your Mac, a little cache file will be created, right? That runs in the background. Most of the time, these files are hidden. The reason that they're there is to help speed up your, um, your applications opening up next time, all right? But they take up a lot of space. Clearing out your caches can relieve a lot of space, can also clear up 
um, issues that you may be having on the Mac. So certain applications could be having problems. It could be because your caches have become corrupted as well. So going and clearing out your cache is also a good thing. Now keep in mind that your cache can keep a lot of information, like your saved um, saved settings of certain apps, that sort of stuff. So be mindful when you are removing your caches. I generally try to do it every few months just to give it a good clean and it definitely does increase the speed of my Mac. So to do this, you'd open up your Finder, go into the Go area and go to Go to Folder. Now the library folder by default is um, hidden. There are generally two library folders that we're gonna go and clear out. Within here, you wanna do a forward slash library and OK. And that will open up this library folder. Within here, you'll see caches. And in here, you'll see some cache files. These are some folders and cache files that we've accumulated over time. So select your caches and trash it, okay? That's the first step. The second lot of cache that you can do is again, you go into your folder, now what I will make note of is that the cache that we just looked at here is called your system cache. You've also then got your user cache, which is the cache that is part of your username. So if your username is Fred, then Fred has its own caches attached to it. So if you have multiple users on your Mac, you'd want to log into each one of your Mac users and clear out the user cache for each one of them. And to do that, at the front of here, we wanna put this little tilde squiggly line, all right? That is on top of your tab key. So next to the one on your keyboard, you've got that tilde. So you hold down the shift and that key, let's see if I can show you on the screen, that one there, okay, next to the one. So hold down the shift and that, and that will create that little squiggly tilde sign, okay? So that forward slash library and okay. That is now gonna open up the library for your user. Likewise, we then got a caches folder with a whole bunch of things in here. Same as before, select, select all of the caches in here and go ahead and trash it, all right? It's gonna trash that into your recycling bin and then you go and empty your recycling bin, okay? Um, some of these caches may be locked because you are loaded into your Mac because some files may be using those caches, so generally, Trashing what you can, you, you may have to restart your Mac to actually go and trash your, um, your um, caches uh, once your Mac is booted up again. Talking about recycling bin, you will have no idea how many people that I meet that keep files in their recycling bin. When you delete something on your Mac, go get into the good habit of trashing your recycling bin, okay? Get into that good habit right clicking on your trash and saying empty recycling bin. Empty, well empty recycling, I'm talking about windows here. On your Mac it's empty trash. Empty your trash as often as you can. I've just gotten into the good habit of when I delete files, go into my trash, right click and empty it and just try to keep that a good habit. Don't store files in there, yeah? Don't store files in there. Be just because it's in the trash doesn't mean that it's actually gone, doesn't mean that you've saved any data space on your hard drive either. Um, if it's in your trash, it's still accumulating your your um, your data on your hard drive. So clear that pretty regularly. So clearing out your website browser history and your saved cache files is something that will help improve the speed of your Mac. Okay, not only your Mac but also your Safari browsing, your Firefox, your Google Chrome browsing as well. So you can do this across all of your browsers, any browser that you may use on your Mac, you can go ahead and clear out your history. Try to do it pretty regularly. You can set it up so that it can delete it automatically when you exit the app. We're gonna look at Safari for this demonstration, but it is similar to do in Firefox and Chrome if that's what you decide to use, okay? So within Safari itself, nice and easy is you go into Safari and you've got clear history right in the Safari main option that will go and clear all of your history. You can also go into history and clear history and that will remove history, okay? You can go into Safari and preferences. In here, you've got an option that says remove download list items, okay? After one day, when Safari quits, upon successful download manually. So you'll find that when you download apps, you know, they may stay in your, um, 
uh, in your history for a while. So after one day, it's going to remove it automatically. I can set it so that when Safari quits, so when Safari quits, every single time I close Safari, it's going to go ahead and remove um, those those files as well. So keeping your history clear across your Safari and across your browsers will improve your experience. So there's a great app on Mac OS Sierra called Disk Utility. So you can go into your spotlight on the top right here and type in disk and you'll open up disk utility like so. You go into the first aid area. It's going to ask you, would you like to run first aid on your Macintosh hard drive? So you'll see that I've got a Macintosh hard drive listed here and it's going to run first aid across that drive. If you have other drives, if you have some external hard drives, if you have multiple partitions on your hard drive, you can run first aid across all of them. So you can select your hard drive, first aid, it's then going to run a whole bunch of checks against your hard drive and it'll present you with a whole list of options. You can go and clear, it's going to fix up um, extensions, it's going to fix up stuff that's essentially on your Mac that could be um, running wrong, running incorrectly, running first aid pretty regularly would definitely assist in that front. Check the activity monitor. This is something that most people don't think about, but it's something that is very, very helpful and uh, very useful to know. So if we go into our spotlight and we type in activity and we open up activity monitor, what this is going to show me is it's going to show me every single application that is running on my Mac, right? Not only applications, but system files, stuff that's running in the background that you probably don't even know about. And it's going to show you how much resources those apps are actually using. So if I go into CPU, you'll see these are the apps that are using up this amount of CPU. Okay. I've got iMovie, QuickTime, you know, memory. Which apps are using the most memory? You can sort it by memory. You can sort it by threads. You can check what ports are being used. I mean, we're not going to go through ports, but it's pretty helpful if you if you work in IT, knowing what ports certain applications use. But let, look, let's leave that for another time. But nice and easily, you can see what apps are running. Okay, You can see the energy. How much energy impact is this application having? Your disk, your network performance, those sort of things. So you can easily go and see if an application is using up a lot of resources. Sometimes you may have an application that is just chewing up so much of your resources. So this, um, you know, iMovie at the moment is just sitting there and it's using 650 meg just by sitting idle. It's just sitting idle in the background. Okay, I can go ahead and close iMovie and that will free up 650 meg straight away of my memory, which I can then allocate, well, an application will then allocate that to something else. So monitoring your um, your activity monitor will definitely give you more of a scope and of, uh, an overview of exactly where all your resources are going to what applications. Clearing out your NVRAM. Now, I would go down this route is uh, if you are sort of out of options, right? Things are just not running too good. Uh, clearing your NVRAM will def essentially reset some stuff on your Mac, okay? Um, it's a sim simple command that you can run on your Mac. You can hold some keys on your keyboard down when your Mac boots up. So when your Mac boots up, you grab your keyboard and you hold down the command Option P and R keys as soon as you boot up your Mac. You hold that, hold down that on your keyboard. Again, it, this is going to be in my description anyway. But when your Mac chime starts up, it'll essentially clear up what's called NVRAM. So it's going to reset some stuff. And a lot of people say that once they've cleared their NVRAM, uh, things run quicker. So don't be scared about doing it. Do it really if you need to. If things, are, if you've tried everything and it's just still running very poorly, try giving that a reset before you do some other stuff. Because you never know, it could have an ex an ex excellent um, result for your uh, speeding up your um, Mac OS Sierra. So if you've tried all of that and things are still running slow, it may be time for you to reinstall your Mac operating system. Look at perhaps backing up your Mac. If you're using Time Machine, back up your Mac to Time Machine and then reinstall your Mac, your Mac operating system. Remove it completely and reinstall it again. That will generally speed up things, okay? Um, but only do that really if you're worst case scenario and you know what you're doing. Don't go tampering around with reinstalling your Mac and trying to restore all your files if you're a little bit unsure about what to do, okay? But that's something that can help you as well. Normally restarting uh, a, a fresh install of your Mac uh, will have a tremendous, tremendous speed increase. Look at third-party apps. 
So there is a great app called Clean My Mac 3 um, by a company called MacPaw. A lot of the stuff that we talked about, this app will do automatically for you. It's gonna scan your Mac and clean a whole bunch of stuff. It will actually provide a whole heap of other files that we haven't even talked about in this demo to be able to go ahead and clean it, including old iTunes, um, iPhoto caches, um, mail caches, all this sort of stuff that we haven't touched on today, um, you can clean quite easily with the Clean My Mac app. So you can download this app from my description down the bottom. There's a link there that you can click on and go ahead and download it for free. You can try it for free. Great app, I would highly recommend you looking at it and trying it out because it'll make your life so much easier and clean out a whole heap of clutter to essentially speed up your Mac in general. Look at increasing the resources of your Mac. Look at perhaps getting more RAM on your Mac. So you can go into your Apple symbol and about this Mac, and you'll have overview, right? And we're gonna go into the memory tab, for example, and it's gonna show me here how much memory I've got on my computer. So I've got 16 gig worth of memory, and there are four slots, all currently used with four gig sticks in each slot. Now, your Mac could have um, less RAM, right? You could, you could have, for example, two slots and then there's two slots empty. Good news, that means you can go and get two more slots of RAM of memory and insert it into your Mac and that will, well, you, you will definitely see a speed increase, okay, when by adding more RAM. Um, you could also perhaps upgrade your RAM. So if you're running four gig, you could see if you can run eight gig RAM, okay? Those sort of things you will know by going into your overview and getting the specs of your Mac, all right, what are the specs of my Mac? Going onto the internet and, and actually checking to see what are the maximum memory resources available for your Mac. If you can get more RAM, great, go ahead and buy some. A tip that I would definitely recommend though, is if you are looking at getting more RAM for your Mac, um, shut down your Mac, open it up and get the RAM slot out. Okay, there are videos online on how to get the RAM out of different Macs. If you've got a laptop, if you've got a, a, a desktop, that sort of thing, be wary of that. Take that Mac um, uh, RAM stick to your local PC store, even to your local Apple store, and see if you can get yourself a replacement. Even easier, if you're not too techy and you don't want to open, uh, open up things yourself, take your Mac to your local Apple store and ask them to increase the RAM for you. They'll charge you, they'll do it all for you, they'll pay for the labor, and they'll put in that RAM and make your, RAM, uh, your, your Mac run quicker. So that is my steps to help clean up and speed up your Mac on macOS Sierra. So if you found this video helpful, please like it and subscribe to Digital Byte Computing for a whole bunch of more videos.